Today we'll be looking at the believer's authority. The believer's authority. Authority simply means delegated power. And the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power, not a kingdom of words. He said, Paul said, I'm not preaching with enticing words of man's wisdom. In the natural, when power is delegated to you, you can actually uh, exercise it, it's of no use. A policeman who directs traffic, for instance, power has been vested on him through his uniform. Is that true? But if it does not do like this, the power is of no use. But if he exercises that authority, you can see the power in use. The trailer, the big truck that comes, naturally he can't stop it with his human strength. But he can turn his face and do like this, the trailer will stop. Is that true? Why? He's using the power that will be vested on him to say stop. No matter what that truck, it will stop. Why? He's exercising the authority vested on him. If he removes that uniform and does that, nobody will stop. True? So as a believer, there's something you carry that can make you say to evil, stop. And you can also say to good things, come. Because say traffic man has power to stop and also to say, move. Are you getting me? I pray today your eyes will be open. The same man can say to car what? The same man can say, move. So you can command things to happen and you can command things to stop. The believer's authority therefore means to have the power to be in command. To have the what? To be in command. Yadis and Yami, well, no believer is disadvantaged. Regardless of his race, background, gender, status, name it. Because God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, as chapter 10, 34, 35. And he opened his mouth and said over through that passage that God is no respecter of what? Persons. In every nation, how many nations? No matter the nation where you come from, you are accepted of God. There's no difference, Romans 10 verse 12. There's no difference between the Jew and what? The Greek. Same Lord is rich to all that call upon his name. Whether male or female, we are one what? In Christ. Galatians 3 verse 28. Those who we presented are the ones who what? In Romans chapter 8, 29 to 30, it said, Romans it for whom he did for know he also did present to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And verse 10 he said, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called he justified, whom he justified, he glorified. So we are all, all, every one of us have a glorious destiny. Every child of God. Now, if you feel disadvantaged as a believer, it is because of ignorance. Because of what? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Isaiah 4, 6. That's ignorance of who you are. Ignorance of what you have. And ignorance of what to do. There are three things. If you feel disadvantaged, you are ignorant of who you are. You are ignorant of what you have. And you are ignorant of what to do. When these three things are missing, you suffer. Because ignorance is a limiter of destiny. God speaking as there to the 5, 1 to 4 and verse 13. He said, he was given a parable for time's sake. He said, what will I do that I have not done to my vineyard? When I spread my vineyard to produce, my vineyard is not producing. <laughs> Are you going to say now? He said, what will he do that he has not done? Okay, what will God do for you that he has not done? He has given you Jesus. Is there anything remaining again? He said, what will I do? But he said, my people have gone into captivity. They are never going to find for lack of knowledge. Verse 13. He said, is there anything God will do for you that he has not done? He gave his son to die for you, true? He has blessed you with everything. So if things are not working, it's simply what? Ignorance. What is the problem? Ignorance. 
So to succeed, you need to understand and utilize your God-given authority. Your God-given authority. What makes the difference is simple understanding. Simple what? It's a good understanding give it favor. Proverbs 13 verse 15. So to live above limitations of life, you need understanding of who you are. You need understanding of what you have and you need understanding of what to do. Shout hallelujah. So Paul was praying in Ephesians 1.18. He said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That you should have understanding to know the things God has provided for you. I pray today that your eyes will open to see what God has for you in the name of Jesus. Say with me, Holy Spirit. Enlighten my eyes. Enlighten my understanding so I can be in charge. I must exercise authority. Open my eyes to know who I am, what I have, and what to do. Shout hallelujah. So, in this time, we're looking at some things to understand about your God-given authority. Some things to do what? Understand about your God-given authority. Some things to understand about your God-given authority. One, know who you are. Know who you are. Do you know, for instance, you see in Nigeria, let me give Nigeria where we are, the police will stop you and say, identify yourself, where are you? Nowhere in the world will you ask a citizen, who is he? He's not a criminal. But you'll be afraid. Most of you will be afraid. And they will arrest you and say, you are going to prison because we don't know who you are. They can't say that to a lawyer because the lawyer will be laughing at them and say, I'm in Nigeria, you're telling me to identify myself with what? You don't need an identity in your country except you're an alien. But police will stop you and say, hey, where are you? That is how the devil behaves. The devil has Nigerian police nature. <laughs> they say, stop! Park here, park here, park here. They've done it to me long ago so many times. I will laugh. They say, come down. Bring your particulars. When they give you your particulars, they will not be moving. So you come down from your car. He said, come down. If you don't come down, this your motor will move. So when you see that, they say, who will be this one? Intimidation is purely the nature of the devil. When you don't know who you are. How can somebody ask you, who are you in your country? Are you a stranger? <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must know who you are. A Christ. So here. Who are you? A. A it does that everywhere. So don't think it's only Nigeria. Nigeria is everywhere. Even outside the country, tonight, they see people shout at somebody. I say, what, what is that? I say, what is that? Am I a criminal? No, you are. A, understand that God is your father. God is what? And you are a, you are a member of his household. Understand that God is your father. And you're a member of his what? Ephesians 2.19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Is that true? But what? Let's read together. I want to go. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God. Shout hallelujah. Once you are born again, you are born of God. You are born into the family of God. You are not a non-entity. You belong to God's family. Do you know it's wrong to say my family is so poor? You don't know who you are. The family you belong to is the wealthiest family. 
No royal family on earth is as wealthy as your family. The prince of any nation does not have the, the finances, resources your family has. Do you understand me? But unknowingly, you still have to say, we came from a very poor family. Have you not said it before? Hmm? Ignorance. In John 3 and verse 3, 5 and 6, but verse 6 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is what? And you know it, that you must be born again. You are born of God, so you don't belong to the earthly family anymore. So I hear. Which family do you belong to? Which family do you belong to? You sure? Then why are you talking like a man who belongs to a family in a living? In a living? Yele. You don't belong to that family. You belong to the family of God. And the family you belong to, they don't fail. Failure is an anatomy in that family. <laughs> so where are you? You're a member of God's family. Are you sure? Are you sure? It says you are no more strangers. You are not a stranger. You are no more a foreigner. You are not an alien. That is your family. So here. I pray you renew your mind. B. Understand that you are a God. You know how I spell the God? I spell small g or capital D to differentiate you from idol. You are what? Listen. That is who you are. Who are you? I know some of you will be finding it difficult to say it. Who are you? <laughs> is it one of you? <laughs> is heavy your mouth? Say the truth. Say the truth. Okay. Psalm 82, 5 and 6. Shall we read together? They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in what? Darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said. Who is we'll, we'll speaking? Read now. If God says you are a God, why are you not trying to find a struggle to God? Now, I will read the Amplified Classic. I like the way that one put it. No, from five. The magistrate and judges know not. Neither will understand. They walk on in the darkness of complex science satisfaction. You know why you, go, you use judges? In any judicial, the judge is in charge. That court. So the art you are in charge. Not, listen. This art is not God who is in charge. Who is in charge? That's what I say. Delegated power. Authority means delegated what? God is not in charge of the earth. Who is in charge of the earth? You. He has delegated the power for you to exercise authority here. Do you understand it? Hello. If a traffic man is standing at a junction, who is in charge there? The police traffic man? If for this traffic man to be crying to the president of that nation to come and control traffic, how does it look like? It's madness. So for you to be crying to God, God is looking at you as a mad person. Exercise your worth. Turn it. Say so here. That's what I said to Moses. Why are you crying to me? I have empowered you with the staff. In the New Testament, we are different. He said, I have empowered you with the thing in your hand. Why are you not crying to me? Exercise your worth. I've delegated authority to use it now and exercise it. Do you understand what he said? Who was Moses trying to cry to? God said, no, now. <laughs> no. Exercise what I've given. To. Most times, the things we are praying about are things which we should decree. You know, we belong to a society where everything is prayer, 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 prayer. Even for something, we have to exercise authority. Are you getting me? If that is, you don't pray. You issue degree. You say, this thing happened like this. Hmm? I pray you have understanding. Does the magistrate pray to sentence a criminal? He say, I've been sentenced to seven years imprisonment. Does he pray, Father? I pray you for this man to be jailed. God has given you that same power 
to say things and it will come to pass. Based on who you are. The magistrate that does not know nothing, neither do they understand. They walk on in the darkness of complex satisfaction. All the foundation of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rests the administration of justice are shaken. Lawyers will have better understand here. I said, you are God's. Since you judge on my behalf, do you understand it better here? Who will you judge on? Whose judge are you? <laughs> As my what? Indeed, all of you are children of the most high. So, oh God, oh God, God said, no, don't call me. Say it, I confirm it. Say from today. As I declare, God confirms. Say it one more time. I represent God. Therefore, whatever I say comes to pass. Now, in one minute, look at your life and decree one thing as you see. Say, this evil must stop in my life. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. And command something to happen in one minute, in the name of Jesus. Command an evil to stop. Say it in the name of Jesus. I command something to happen. Issue a decree. In Jesus' mighty name. I said, A, understand that God is your father. B, yes, understand that you are God. C, understand your new position. Understand your new what? In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And I raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Where? Christ Jesus. He said, when you're born again, you have been raised up. It doesn't mean physically you are lifted like an aircraft. That's not what it means. It means you belong to another realm in the spiritual. In the spirit, you, are no longer, you don't belong to the, the area where Satan belongs. You are no longer in the Celestia. You are not in the Celestia. I don't mean Celestia Church. I mean Celestia. So don't mistake the two. You belong to the Celestia. That means you belong to the super. You don't belong to the Celestia. Where Satan operates. Are you going to have now? You see, you have been raised up. Where is the up? You want to find out. In heavenly what? Now, that heavenly places in Ephesians chapter 1, if you read 19 to 21, he said, Paul was also praised. He said, and what the exceeding greatness of his power to us, what we believe, I got one of his power, which he wrote in Christ, when he raised him up from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above what? And power. And mind and dominion and every nice name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I put all to the right feet. Now God said, I have raised you up far above which is an I've raised you up far above all the elemental forces of praise of the earth. So I hear. He said, I'm lifted to Christ in heavenly what? But someone may ask, if I'm in heavenly place, why am I sitting on the earth? Heaven in this contest is simply. By faith, you actualize it. I'm going to show you from scriptures. Is Satan in heaven? I come again. Is Satan in heaven? From Revelation 12, where was it a cast out from? He said, There was no more place found anymore in heaven. Is that true? Revelation 12, 8. So, is Satan in heaven? I'm asking you. Is Satan in heaven? Now, if you hear a voice, like a microphone or in the atmosphere, Satan is now in heaven. Will you believe? What if, if they announce in your compound with megaphone or whatever now sound, Satan has now appeared in heaven. Will you get up to pray? Why? Because even your subconscious, you know, Satan cannot be in heaven. True? 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 Now listen, the day your faith rises to know that your heavenly places, you will never bother about Satan anymore. He will never have access to you. Now how do you enjoy heavenly places? Turn with me to Romans 10, 6 to 8. But the righteousness which is of faith, speaking on this right, say not in the heart, who shall ascend into what? It says, it's something you must be conscious of what goes on in your heart. Don't say in your heart, I can pass away heaven. 
Once you say so, the supernatural that makes you live in heavenly places will be disconnected. We're in a kingdom where God sees the heart. If you say, oh God, how can I say I'm in heavenly places when I'm here, living here on the earth? This is in their preaching. I don't understand though. Once you say that in your heart, in your heart, not outside though, Satan will have access to you. But it says, Satan, now, where did this see blood pour on you? And you said you are born again. Say faith. Say faith. Did you see blood? How do you believe that you are, you are born, you have been forgiven? By what? The same faith that you have for salvation, the same faith you have that you see in heavenly places. It's simple. Heavenly places is simply standing on the integrity of this world by faith. Heavenly places don't mean that you have to fly to an invisible realm where nobody sees you. Do you understand me? Now, Christians will not go to heaven when we die. We'll go from heaven to heaven. We are, all, we are already in heaven. We're only moving to another. It's, you know, if you enter a vehicle, you start from bus stop to bus stop. But you are still in the vehicle, true? So we are going to move from one level of heaven to another heaven. We're already in heaven. I may not understand it. We are not going to heaven when we die. Religion made us to believe that. A believer is already where? He's only going to another kind of are you getting me? By transport. No, this. But the right hand which is of faith, speaking on this wise, sin on the heart which has sent to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or what? Who shall I descend to the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which you preach. So heavenly place simply standing on the word of God by faith. Now listen. I used to be defiled as an unbeliever. Like some of you see survive it. A woman's face, and then you get up and find yourself that you're defiled. Have you ever have you experienced that before? Either if you're a man, it will be a woman. If you're a woman, it will be a man. Once in a while, you do everything, you find yourself. Somebody will take a human face to come and defile you. Now, when I became born again, I read a book by my mentor, Elizabeth Supernatural. That was the title then. That was the first book of his book I read. I read that book between Portacot and Lagos. Just, I just gave my life inside the bus. Nobody laid hands on me. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody cast out any demon. Ephesians 2 6 was the first scripture I got as a believer that I've stayed with Christ heavenly places. That was the last day I had that attack. Now, what is God saying? The day you stand on that word, all this deliverance, prayer, fighting the devil, doing midnight, is a function of ignorance. Just meditate on Ephesians 2.6. I'm seated with Christ where? And where I am, Satan is not there. Satan can't come there because he has been cast out. That will be the end. I may not understand it. They say the eyes of your understanding may be... Right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Shout hallelujah. So who are you? You know who you are now? And number two. Know what you have. Know what you... You know who you are. And also, we can't take all... You can read the books and I've also taught on so many. I can't teach all in one service. Know what you have. If one decides to touch, you know what you are? Do you know... God will always use what you have to give you what you want. A, the resources of God are at your disposal. He said the silver is mine. The gold is mine. If I got to verse 8. Say the Lord. The art is the Lord's and the fullness the world that did that dwell there in Psalm 24 verse 1. In Psalm 115 verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the laws, but the earth are they given to the children of men. Is that true? Our God owns all the resources that exist on earth. Hope you know that. Who is that person? Your father. Listen. Who owns everything on this earth? Not the devil, my friend. Who owns it? If you say God, it sounds too religious. Say my father. Personalize it. Who owns everything in this world? Now, if your father is the owner, then why are you suffering? Why are you in luck? <laughs> Signalers. Signalers. 
You should, can. Your father owns everything. Even the natural, if, you, if you're a parent, and your children say, we are hungry, and your neighbor's children say, they are hungry, who will you give food first? Though? So if your father is the owner, and you're suffering, begging every day, writing notes every day, doing suffering from hand to mouth, then something must be wrong. You can be born again and suffer so much out of ignorance. He said, God has blessed us with what? With spiritual blessings and heavenly blessings. Everything. But hear this. That word omnipotent means two dimensions. Omnipotent is where potential is taken from. Omni simply means multidimensional in its potentials. You know, when they say omni mic, means you can put the mic like this, it will hear. You do like the mic, it will hear. If you put like this here. Now, you as a child of God, everything that makes God God, he puts it inside, it's inside of you. That's why he said he gave to every man several ability. Everybody has something in you to create wealth. There's no ungifted person in this world. Did you hear me at all? Hmm? I come again. What? Check everybody God ever blessed. He didn't use something outside. That's a long teaching that I will just say it in summary. Everybody God blessed, he used what was with them to bless them. When God blessed Peter, what did he use? His both and his net. God did not use, so go and borrow hook. It was the same boat he had. True? Through? Through. When God blessed Abraham, what did he use? What he had. The well, true? And his cattle. True? When God blessed Jacob, what did he use? The same cattle he was wearing. When God blessed Joseph, what did he use? His brain as wisdom. True? He did not say, Joseph, now I'm going to go and meet somebody to borrow from him. Everybody God blessed, he used what they have inside them. True? Are you getting me? Resources, most times we think, is somewhere you go to get money. Your greatest capital is your mind. What's your greatest capital? Your mind. Now, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, they say, we have the mind of Christ. We are what? And that mind of Christ, by it all things were created. John 1 verse 3. Now if you have the creator's mind, are you permitted to be stranded? No, we are coming in. The creator, the mind that created everything is inside who? Inside who? Inside you? Then why are you not creating? It is a time of hardship. You will know whether you are creative. Life story today. I had a meeting with some professionals at the cathedral site. And one of them likes to speak English. He will speak too much English. And I noticed that he's yelling me, he's in charge. He speaks English. Plenty of English. His theoretical approach is too... It speaks sound theoretical assertions, full of theories. And there's a major challenge. So he keeps talking about how we do the challenge, how do <laughs> any day I go and say, What next? He will tell me, I say, You've not gotten the answer. When you get the answer, I will tell you. So yesterday I was there, the, the meeting could not hold for one or two reasons. So I already fixed the meeting for today. And I went back, I said, what again? He says, I will do one, one kind of theory that is like a Mediterranean Sea or Red Sea. <laughs> he gave me one big theory. I said, this theory will not work. I said, this theory will not. I said, are you the university of government? He said, we'll partner with the government. I said, to do what? For this, so this thing, we don't go, we don't go and partner with the government. <laughs> I said, leave the university of government alone. We'll go and partner with the government for this small problem. Then I said, go and think. One of them has worked with me for when the project started, so he understands the way I think. 
Funny enough, he's not a member of this church, but somebody can, from your teaching, craft your mind. He understands because he has seen me think. So the moment he came, he said, sir, this thing has been a problem, and I know you, everybody is saying problem. This is the answer. I said, this is the answer. He didn't speak grammar. He said, this is how... Okay, let me tell you how it is. You know, rainfall is heavy in River State. So we are thinking of how they will channel the water out of the cathedral site. If you see the ambiguous, big, big theories that came about. <laughs> fat, 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 fat English. <laughs> All of them, they will provide a simple solution. I said, this is the answer. Once they will channel the water from the cathedral to Iglita Junction. <laughs> As I, you go to take the slope. Because the thing is... <laughs> And they've already casted the road. So we are going to a break road. Are you the owner of that express road? I said, this is not practicable. Forget it. They all man of solutions. But simple solution. I told you, I said, this is the... <laughs> now, in the midst of hardship, I pray for you that your creative power of God inside of you will come alive. Let me say this to all of us. The best time to be born is now. Ask me why. The hardship now is so heavy that it will take only creative minds to succeed. And this is the best time to be a child of God. I've been saying it long ago that things will get very tough. Is that true? I don't know. Is it not happening now? This is when you will know those who are hearing teachings and those who will not be understanding teachings. Because it is not you know whether your mind is creative or not. Because the talent is not, they are global. Oh. It's not Nigeria. Oh. Go to UK, things are tough. Go to America, it is tough. Though some places it's tougher. It is tough, tougher, tougher. But there's no place without economic challenge. No place without economic what? On the earth today, there's economic challenge everywhere. Prices of things have gone like this in the United States. Things they used to sell under something dollars, they're not selling them for 300 400 dollars. The same things. So don't think it's only Nigeria, but don't, everywhere has its own peculiar. But nice when you know whether you're mine, because now it has gone beyond school. True? Those who read economics can't provide solution. There are challenges that will come, your school won't work. That's when you have to use what you have inside of you, inside here. Okay. Now, the water was a challenge at the cathedral, true? So, all the geophysical, geological, geosymmetrical, geo whatever, geo, it was not working. <laughs> we needed, you know, in school, you do mathematics. In challenge, you do life mathematics. They can teach you medicine and tell you this drug will solve. Now, somebody came and said, He's still paining me with the drug. You have to use a data to think beyond school. That's what Belkasa did. So here. It's easy to pray. Oh. Do you know why people like prayer? Ask me why. You know why? It does not need brain taxing. To think is stronger than prayer. You know, prayer does not need anything. Do you, can you do like this? I don't make consulting prayers. Just this kind of Nigerian kind of prayers. We people are praying now. <laughs> you can do that for five hours. But to think is work. Between a prayer warrior and a manager, who would they pay more? God said, come, let us what? There was no way God said, let us pray together. Prayer, this church will pray. But please think pray. If all you do is only prayer without thinking, you'll be the most stupid and most foolish Christian that people look at your Christianity and ask you, say, oh boy, you truly, are you born again? Even your prayer, think pray. Do what? Think pray. Think before you pray. I pray today the creative part of God that is in you already will come alive. Yeah. So don't go too far. What do you do? 
look on your inside. Look around you. It is what you have God will use from your creative mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? And number three. Superiority mentality. I close with it. Superiority what? I close with number three. Superiority mentality. If you must exercise authority, you must have a superiority what? In Jeremiah 1 verse 10, it said, see, that was see means understand. Say see, understand. I have set thee over what? And over the kingdoms. He said, I have set you over nations. So not over nations. He said, nations. So you are not a local champion. He said, understand. I have set you over nations. Stop being a local champion. He said, see, I have set you over nations, over kingdoms. So you are not supposed to be in one local place and be excited that you are just dominating one local place. No, whether you are a businessman, whether you are a career person, you are supposed to dominate nations. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So even your books are not supposed to be sold only in your university. It's an anathema for a lecturer to write a book and all his department is buying it. That's an abuse of redemption. He says, see, I've set you over what? So your clothes should not be sold all on your street. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Have a superiority worth? Now, God is not going to empower you. He has, a, he has given you power already. Listen carefully. He's not going to give you. He has given you. Now, it's for you to exercise. Luke 10 verse 19. All of you know the scripture. Read, want to go? This is a behold I will give, I give. Listen, read it. Behold. Did he say he will give or he give? So you have it already. Then why are you not using it? He said, behold, I give unto you power to turn upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies. He said, behold, I give power to you. And all powers in heaven and earth has been given unto who? To you. Matthew 28 verse 18. So you must possess a superiority mentality over the devil. Listen. You must possess very mentality over what? The devil. Negative circumstances and situations. Ye of God, little children, 1 John 4, 4. And I have overcome them. Behold, greater is he that is he than he that is what? You quote it. You do what? And you know your problem? You have not gotten a true reflection of who you are from scriptures. A great man of God. Life story. A boy will come to the class and intimidate them. Beat everybody in the class. Every time the boy will just come and say, if any of you can fight me, I deal with you. He will conk everybody, conk everybody in the class. Beat them. So one day, one of them was beaten. And on the mirror, he now saw a reflection of his chest. He said, well, I can beat this boy. I can beat him. He looked at the mirror. And as he was trying to shave, he said, ah, I, can beat him. I can beat him. He looked at his chest again. When the boy came to the class, he just lifted the boy and brought him down. Bah. That was how that intimidation stopped. You have not looked at the mirror of the world. So every small thing, he said, now sit down now, now sit down now, now sit down now, if not for these witches. If you see the true picture of your who you are in Christ, you will flood the devil. You may not understand what I'm talking about. Shout hallelujah. He said, greater is see that is inside you than the devil. That which from above is what? John 3.31. Think like a God and don't think like a good. For as he thinking in his heart, so he refuse grasshoppers mentality. That one is John 3 3, first John 4 4. In Numbers 13, 30 to 33. Numbers 13, 30 to 33. Numbers 13. 
And Caleb said the people before Moses and said, let us go up once and possess it, for we are well worth able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they have searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth of the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that, saw, that, that we saw in it are men of what? If it is people, how did they come back? You know, we, that's how people will talk. We over exaggerate, we over blow things. Nobody can survive in the country. Then why are you there? Nobody can survive. If you, nobody, then where are you? If no one can survive, are you dead now? We, we, we over exaggerate. You no, know, if you can't make it, no way. So, are you dead now? But look at 33. That's the mindset you should have. 33, verse 33. Verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and were in their own sight. So this, this is the kind of mentality they had. This is the kind of what? We are in our own sight. As what? So God forbid. You have to behave like Caleb. We said, no, we be well able. Verse 30. That's why I said, ah, look, no matter the hardship, I'll make it. No ma- say, I'll make it. I'll make say it one more time. I'll say it like a child of God. I'll say it a minute. Caleb and Joshua had the superiority mentality. The rest then have class of us what? Now, Paul speaking said, I can do. Two. Philippians 4.13. Never you say, I can't. Otherwise, you remain in the can. He said, I can do what? Say, I have God's given ability to do all things. So, the degree of your superiority mentality is what will determine how far you utilize God's given potentials in you. I'm, I'm trying to round off. Understand this that God is in you, God is with you, and God is for you. Therefore, nothing should intimidate you. God is in you. God is with you. And God is for you. John 14, 17 and Romans 8, 31. God is what? In me. Who is in me? Who is with me? Who is for me? So why will a man on the other side intimidate me? If God be for you, complete it. Then why are you afraid of people who are against you? If God is moving with you, can they pick you up? <laughs> All this they pick you up is ignorance. They can't pick me up. Nobody can pick me up. Can you pick God? Have you not heard members they say they came and they could not touch them? Why? They are conscious of God with them. You can't pick God. Can they never pick God? When you are conscious, please read that small book. Holy Ghost, Holy, the consciousness of uh, Holy Spirit consciousness. You, you can't be picked up by arm robbers. It's not here. Are you get what I'm talking about? Glory to God. Superiority mentality is very important. It makes you possess and speak God's thought pattern. If you want to command lastness plus, then you must possess the superiority what? Psalm 110 verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of thy rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Hebrews 2 8. Thus put all things in subjection under my feet. I'll give a typical example and I'll round off my teaching. Look at the man David and Goliath in 1 Kings 17. Now, if you see the story of David and Goliath, he defeated Goliath from where? From his mind. This is where he first won Goliath. You will never win until you win your mind. Now, listen. It will humble you. The same thing happened between Goliath and David. See happening to you today. Do you know David was not the only one at the war front? His brothers were there before him. Hope you are aware. Now, his brothers had the same covenant he had. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. They were there before even David came. So why didn't they exercise the authority of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel? 
Even when it came with a different mindset, they said, you have come again with your nonsense. There's a way, this kind of teaching will intoxicate you that even when you stay among believers, they say, you have started, though. You started. This is your arrogant talk. If you're really used to this teaching, your way of talking will be different. They'll see as one puppy, one arrogant, one person who talks anyhow you like. But it's us we show. It doesn't matter who doesn't understand you for now. They will understand you later. When, you, when this kind of teaching enters you, 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 you can't talk like people who talk in the world. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistines who is defiling the armies of God? His brother said, shut up! This man is a giant. You know what Goliath means? Giant. Some of you, giant of poverty is the Goliath you have. Some of you, the giant of sickness, Goliath. He said, well, so you tell the devil, with the poverty, you can't harass me in this country. I'm bigger than you. David said, I'll bring your head down this day. And every glad before you will come down. Yeah. From where? It's mine. So as a child of God, you are superior to any other person outside the kingdom. Of God, no matter who is. But it is not enough to know that you have an advantage. What makes it work in conclusion is your faith in the word. All these things I'm talking, not that you don't hear them. The reason they have never produced, you don't have faith in this book. It takes faith to actualize your God-given authority. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that the word of the word. What? So you must have faith that whatever God says, you don't doubt it. It is true. So here. Faith is the passcode to assess all that God has made available to us. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Faith is having total confidence in God. Total dependency on God and his word. I don't doubt what he says. What he says is what I believe. Because faith is son of this hope for evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders of them good what report. Hebrews 11 verse 1 verse 2. So, I don't doubt it. God, do you say I'm a God? I believe it. Do you say the art is the fullest the love? You are my, my friend, you want everything? I believe it. Do you say I should command it to happen? I don't doubt it. I give an issue. Because if all these things, it's not the armor you carry, it's the heart you have. They can give you gun and you will not be able to shoot if you don't have a heart. So I hear. So it is your faith that gives you what? An advantage and puts you in charge of all our affairs. Your life will become colorful when you live by faith. The church shall live by faith. The church shall do what? So the church shall die without faith. Now listen. And I close with this scripture. Mark 10 to the 7. We are done. I'm done with the preaching. Read it together. Mark 10 to the 7. Let's all of us read. One to go. There's a word there you should know. But with God. This is a but to God. If the Bible says but to God, it means everything would have been, God would have been solely responsible. God said, with God. That means you have to partner with me. I come again. If the Bible said to God, it means God would have been solely what? Jesus said, do you want to see impossible become possible? Partner with me. Just agree with what I've said. How do you partner with God? Mark 9 to 3. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him, the individual that believes. So God said, anything I have told you, you believe it and act on it. You commit my integrity to make the possible possible. So it is faith that made the authority to become a reality. Say here. God has vested so much authority on you, but they will never work without faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? Faith is the turning on of the ignition of your car. The car is fine, but will never move on the ignition comes on. True? Without faith, you have not turned on anything. Faith is what turns on the car to move. You engage the GI faith. 
Car, you are very fine. The car is useless. Every morning you come say, beautiful car. Very fine car. The car will be looking at you too. I'm fine. Move me now. That thing you engage to move the car is what? Your faith. All that is in this Bible, they are beautiful. Faith is what makes them a reality. 